The children flew to the old mother to demand an inheritance, but when they heard these words from her, they were taken aback. When Sarah heard her children arguing about their inheritance, she decided to change her will, ultimately to help another person she met at the hospital. Her children cut off their mother for good, but Sarah was shockingly not alone anymore. Sarah walked the hallways of a hospital in New York to clear her head. She got admitted after a bad angina case and she liked seeing people. She was a healthy widow and still received royalties from her late husband's best-selling books, but she didn't have the best relationship with her kids, Anne and Mark. Anne got married against Sarah's wishes. Her current husband was a clear gold digger who didn't love Anne at all, but he sweet-talked her into marriage, got her pregnant, and there was nothing Sarah could do for her daughter, so Anne never visited her mother. Meanwhile, Mark was allegedly always busy at work, but Sarah suspected that he didn't want to bother with his old mother. But they were visiting now, and at first Sarah was delighted to see her kids. Anne even brought one of her children to see her, which was terrific. However, her joy didn't last long. A few hours earlier, when Anne and Mark thought she was sleeping, they started talking about selling her house and how to divide their inheritance. They never even discussed helping Sarah when she was released from the hospital. They both hoped she would die and they would finally get the considerable amount of money in her account. Now the older woman had to think, and she walked around the hospital while her kids stayed back in her room. Suddenly, Sarah stopped. She heard the distinctive cries of a child in her room and peeked through the open door. A boy, who couldn't be older than 11 years old, was sitting next to a hospital bed. A sleeping woman was lying there and the child was crying. Hey, Sarah said softly to avoid waking the woman and entered the room further. Hey boy, are you okay? No, the boy replied looking up. My mom is sick. Sarah got closer and looked at the unconscious woman. What does she have? I don't know, but the doctor said she needs some treatment. We can't pay for that. We have to leave tomorrow. He answered and looked at his mother through his tear-stained face. What's your name, kid? Peter and my mom's Rachel, the boy responded. I'm Sarah. Do you know what treatment she needs? Can you call someone else in your family? The older woman asked. No, we don't have any other family. My mom got sick because she works two jobs to support us and now I don't know what to do. I have to find work too to pay for this, right? And we need to pay for rent too. No, no, you're a child. You shouldn't have to work. Your job is to go to school, get good grades, and be a good kid, all right? Let me see what I can do about your mom, Sarah promised and exited the room after Peter nodded. For some inexplicable reason, she had decided to help this family. The boy was so worried about his mother and couldn't do anything, but he was there by her side, not discussing what he was going to do with her money when she died. Sarah went to the nurse's station and asked about paying for the woman's treatment. They gave her the information and she immediately called her lawyer. Mr. Harrison came to her hospital room and the older woman asked her kids to wait outside during their discussion, but little did she know that they were eavesdropping on them. She told her lawyer to revise her will so each of her kids would receive $5,000 each and wouldn't be able to contest it. They were also getting her house because she had already transferred it to both of them before hearing them talking so callously about her, but everything else would be transferred to Rachel and Peter. The single mom and her kid would start receiving the royalties from her late husband's books and the considerable amount of money on her bank accounts when she died. Sarah also arranged for Mr. Harrison to look for a decent new house for her to live in. She wanted to offer Rachel and Peter a new home, but knew her kids would be furious when they discovered what she'd done. Suddenly, they both burst into the room when Mr. Harrison finished writing all her requests down. Mother, what's going on? You can't disinherit us just like that. Dad's royalties belong to us. Anne yelled, not caring that they were in a hospital. Mark joined in. Yeah, you're gonna give your money to some strange kid you met? Who does that? Fine, we're gonna sell the house and you can't stop us. Anne yelled once again and stormed out of the room. Mark followed after giving his mother an awful look. Anyway, Mr. Harrison, let's continue our plans, please, Sarah said calmly as if that dreadful scene didn't just happen. She had not only disinherited her kids financially, but emotionally as well. The lawyer transferred the money so that Rachel could receive her treatment, and luckily she got better. Peter was by her side every day, and Sarah got a chance to introduce herself to the woman. Due to a lack of rent payment, Rachel and Peter lost their apartment as they had a horrible landlord, but Sarah had just bought a new house and needed help moving. I can offer you two rooms in my house as long as you help me move in. It's a brand new place, the older woman said. Of course, and I'll pay rent too, Rachel said, getting dressed as she was finally getting released from the hospital. Nonsense, your company's all I need, although help around the house would be amazing, she joked. Deal, Rachel said, and Peter smiled at both women. Sarah never saw her kids again, but she formed a new family with a single mother and her child. She received more love from them in her remaining years than she ever did from Anne or Mark.